I've had cats, I've had dogs, I've had gerbils, I've had rabbits, but skunks grab your heart. For those of you new to the Skunk Fest, uh, we see lots of new faces this year, which is great. So if we can start having everyone show up by the tent with your skunks in your arms. Our judges are getting ready to start judging for Skunk Fest 2017. He gets extra points for being so cute. Have you had fun today at the Skunk Fest? Yeah, this is the best day of my life. They're the best things ever. <laughs> Who can top the steampunk skunk? So are you here with Peppy this year? No, unfortunately, she got murdered and decapitated. Hot dogs have been reduced to $2. We just arrived in Ohio. It's the day before the Skunk Fest. It's a convention where people from around the country get together and bring their skunks. I've been told hundreds of skunks show up here, if not more. So we're gonna head over and meet Deb, the brains and skunk lady behind the entire operation. Hey, Hello. how's it going? Yeah, we're just we're trying to figure out where everything's go. going. It takes hours and hours to put the whole skunk fest together, but we're trying to make sure everything goes right so we have a fun day tomorrow. What is the general vibe like at the convention? Everybody's happy to show off their skunks. People are proud of their animals. It's competition, too. And they're happy this to meet right everybody. right here won Queen of Skunk Fest five years in a row. We have a former queen skunk right here yes. among us. She's a former queen. She lost her crown last year. And my skunk won the crown yes. last year. From the queen right here. From the queen. Is there yes. any sort of like competitive vibes at all? Or is it pretty, Oh, it's like, definitely competitive. It gets competitive here. <laughs> yes. But they're still friends. They're still friends? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, At the end of the day? At the end of the day, yeah. And is this the largest convention for skunks? That we know of. Yes, this is the largest skunk convention in, you know, in the, world. the world. Actually, in the world. We're the largest skunk convention in the world. To best prepare myself for the largest skunk convention in the world, I wanted to learn the ins and outs of all things skunk. So Deb told me to meet up with Dr. Krupka, a veterinary expert in the pet skunk universe. So at what point in your career as a vet did you become involved with skunks? It was pretty early on, right out of vet school. That's when I first met Deb. She asked me if I could do a procedure in a skunk. Um, for a number of years, I did the descenting procedure here as well. But most of the time now, they're coming out of their breeding facilities already descented. So they can live in our houses without the risk of spraying us. What exactly is the process of what you call it, descending? descending? yeah. So the anal gland on either side of the rectum, there's a, a gland on either side. And when the skunk sprays, they actually kind of squeeze the muscles around the rectum, causes the liquid to shoot out at you. So we take out that gland so they can't spray. So essentially you go inside the skunk's ass and you remove yes. the gland. We're going in and removing the gland right from the source of the stink. And it's a very steep learning curve. You quickly learn how to do that procedure. So when you screw up, you know in less than a heartbeat that you screwed up. Typically, day to day, when it comes to people bringing their skunks in, what kind of owners are you dealing with? Oftentimes, owners are looking for just that wow factor. But the people that are really into the skunks have multiple skunks as pets. They think of them as a child. And they, they'll put clothes on them. They have them living in their houses. They're sleeping in their beds. So these people are definitely dedicated to their pets. Thank you very much. Hi, baby. Whoa. So this is not a traditional color one. Um, you'll see lots of colors at Skunk Fest. Um, this would be a brown and white. So the most traditional color is your black and white skunk. He almost looks like a fairy. White. Boy. Oh, you can see yeah. it's a boy because yep. of penis. testicles yep. Yep. Penis yep. right there. Yep. So nice. yeah, kind of a ferret looking face to him. Yeah. Yeah, very He's pretty soft. Cute. Yeah. Yeah. Cute little guy. Yep. And I've been told I'm probably not supposed to go too close to the skunk or so, what's the right, protocol? So we try not to let people touch, pet skunks by their face in case they bite, um, but if you want to go ahead and pet the, the tail end. Yeah, you have a little tail. Ah! <laughs> Just kidding. Very soft, huh? Yeah. yeah, and it's actually the tail, it's a bit firm. It is, it's a little bit coarser fur on the tail, correct, yep. Why Ohio for the skunk fest? Well, we're blessed to have Skunk Haven right here in Ohio, in North Ridgeville, Ohio. So it just so happens to be that she's 20 minutes from the practice, and I have the ability to work with these guys. So that's how we kind of form this alliance. I happen to be in the right state, and I had Deb with Skunk Haven in the same state as well. 
Deborah Cipriani started Skunk Fest back in 2001 as a way to help fund Skunk Haven, a skunk rescue she runs out of her home. And I heard she's got about 50 skunks in her house right now. This is cool. <laughs> Hi, Deb. Hi, welcome to Skunk Haven. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> Now, everybody is running around. No, 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 no. No, come on, guys. It is feeding time. So they're kind of scurrying around over there. Make sure the doors are shut. So be careful. They do not move for you. You move for them because you have to adapt to their lifestyle. Make sure they don't go out. People have, it's very hectic just So what's a normal day like for you of taking care of all these skunks? Oh, it's a long day. That's what a normal day is. <laughs> I get up at 3.30 in the morning. I start my morning to feed every single skunk and clean every single litter box. I feed the skunks twice a day. I do this twice a day. Twice a day? Three hours twice a day. So six hours of the day just devoted to feeding the skunks? Feeding and cleaning every single litter box. It's a very long day, and then I answer the phone calls that people might need help with their pet skunks. So this is a 24-hour, seven days a week love of skunks that I have to help my skunks and help everybody around the world with their pet skunks. Okay, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And I do have a regular job. I work at TA Travel Centers, a truck stop at home office at customer service dealing with truck drivers' issues, <laughs> which is another stressful job. <laughs> Guys, I really got to feed in a hurry because my skunks are they're starting to get hypoglycemic, and that's what happens. So I really got to hustle, and I'm sorry about oh, no that. Problem. But no. that's, that's a sign of when they're vomiting bile, they are very hungry. Pretty soon some of my skunks might start seizuring, so we have to go on fast mode. I feel like a waiter at a skunk restaurant right now. Yeah. Whoa, there are two in that cage? Yep, they're brothers. Brothers. So what initially drew you to get a skunk as opposed to a more traditional pet? I came out to Ohio and I seen skunks in a pet store. And the year 2000, my mom died, and I bought my first skunk to fill the void. So, yes, it's a very special bond between skunk and human companion. It's just very surprisingly quiet in here, and you just hear the scurrying. Which one do you need, Deb? I need paper towels that are right here. Come this way. Gotcha. Right here. Is there a skunk down there? Yeah, there's a couple skunks. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. These ones just kind of hang out under the computer desk? Yes. What are the legalities of owning a pet skunk? Most states you have to have a permit to own a pet skunk. If a skunk does nip somebody and it is turned in, its head will get chopped off and tested for rabies. So that's the big thing with our pet skunks and why we don't let people, one of the reasons why we don't let people touch our skunks. So I've been hearing a lot about this whole king and queen thing from Skunk Fest. What is that all about? It's stiff competition, and it's overall confirmation. What they're going to do is look at the white to make sure the white is white and not orange. They're going to feel to make sure the body weight is the correct body weight. And then they're going to, well, normally what I do is push the tail up because that poofs the tail up and that's good for competition, but I don't tell people what I do because I'm in competition myself. And uh, this was actually the queen from last year. So she is going to be up 
against all the other competitors to see if she can keep her crown. So it's very stiff competition, but it's a big family of people who own skunks that just want to gather and meet each other and see each other once a year. So the, the skunks are bringing people together and it's a big skunk family. Deb's house was a bit intense, but after seeing her dedication and passion for skunks, I was pretty stoked to make some more furry friends. And finally, we were at Skunk Fest. Although skunk ownership is relatively rare, since it is illegal in most states, hundreds of people still travel from across the country to share their love of skunks and enter them into competition. Who are these people? How could they possibly love skunks so much? And most importantly, who will take the crown? I'm here to find out. First time up here. Love it. It's very nice here. Yes. She's four months old, so she's my baby. No, I'm mommy. <laughs> and she loves to give kisses. Come on, give kisses. Except when you want her to. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> it's like a kid. <laughs> so he, he or she? He. This so Mudge. Mudge? Smudge. Smudge. Yeah, he's got a, a smudge a on his white stripe. There. So yeah, it's smudge. Okay. We actually got uh, from Deb, she's got the skunk haven. Are many of the skunks from her around here, or do they come from all over? They come from different breeders. There's quite a few breeders, more down south. What's your favorite thing about owning a pet skunk? How different it is, I guess. You don't really see like people just on the regular. So I mean, it's different. Yes, my name is Tanya Poindexter Vaughn, and this is my first year here at Skunk Fest, but the way I got involved with skunks was last year whenever I rescued a skunk, and that was Peppy. Peppy? <laughs> mm-hmm. So are you here with Peppy this year? No, um, unfortunately, um, uh, she got seized from me, and murdered and decapitated and brought back to me. What's the story behind that? How does a skunk end up getting murdered and decapitated? Well, I had a family member come over to my house in October. My niece is who it was. She later told me that Peppy nipped her. My sister called me and said that it was gonna have to be put down to be tested for rabies. And um, the Fish and Wildlife Department took Peppy and about an hour and a half later, they brought her back to me in a bag. She was still warm, she did not have a head. And I sat on my couch and I held her for four hours crying and had to bury her. That's yeah. really awful to hear that that would happen. Yeah, and there's a big following for my Promises for Peppy campaign that I've got going on and laws needs to be changed. It would save all these animals. Thank you for sharing with us. Hopefully there will be change eventually. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. I appreciate it. All right, everybody, we're gonna get started here. Our judges have uh, arranged themselves underneath the green tent, and our judges are getting ready to start the process of judging for Skunk Fest 2017. So the judging has began. They have their clipboards, they have their skunks, They. Uh, seem to be kind of lifting up the tail, checking out, you know, how the tail does on the skunk. They're uh, kind of just observing the skunk from all different angles. It's a little tense over here. Like, the judges are pretty serious. They're not really cracking many jokes. They're kind of just standing there with their clipboards and the determination in their eyes of finding the best skunk. The judges are looking at the overall health, body shape, and general cleanliness. I wouldn't say the stakes are high, but the winners do get a literal crown and bragging rights on Facebook for an entire year. All right, we're looking for our last couple entries for King and Queen of Skunk Fest 2017. This is Clarkson. Clarkson. <laughs> well, hello there, Clarkson. Is Clarkson about to enter the contest? Yes, he is. What are your expectations out there? Um, uh, sincerely, I expect they'll say he's pretty, but he's too fat. He is a little he's large, I guess. Chunky. He's yes. got a big, fat tail, too. Yes, yes, he does. Is there any competitive vibes or not really? Uh, I used to show dogs, and this is nothing like showing dogs. People are much nicer. 
Are you about to go up there with the skunk? I believe so, finally. Yeah, yeah I hope to win, but there's probably, to be honest, there's probably other skunks that are going to score higher than my Ziggy will, but I love them regardless. Well, good luck out there. Thank you. Why, hello there, former queen from last year. <laughs> She's up for stiff competition this year, whatever all the other female skunks. Who have you seen around that's uh, kind of giving her a run for her money this year? Nobody. Nobody? <laughs> She's the one? She's the one. All right, we're going to let our judges uh, convene back to their tents so they can compile numbers. So judges, thank you very much for judging. And we'll see everybody back here at 2 o'clock when we start with our costume contest. Please enjoy lunch, and we'll talk to you soon. So Deb has me on one of the judging panels for the more fun skunk competitions. So I'm actually going to go meet with one of the judges from the king and queen competition to uh, get a few pointers. I'm judging the costume okay. event later. Do you have any advice? What should I look for out there? I would say you want to look for one that's alert. You want them upright. You want them walking around. Yeah, you want their tail flipping in the air. Like, oh, hey, this is me. I'm a peacock or a devil or whatever, you know, their costume is. You want one that's not trying to get it off. I've definitely seen some skunks that are like, get this off, I don't want it on, you know, so you want them to be okay with it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we got Ruben. Where's Ruben from? From Florida, I can tell. All right, I'll pretend I didn't see that. I'll pretend I didn't see that. No? Okay. We got Clarkson coming in hot. Steampunk skunk. Ski, steam, that's like a tongue twister. Steampunk skunk. All right, who can top the steampunk skunk? He's very docile. He's that's really a good feature, I hear. Do we have any more costume contestants? All right, do we have any more talented skunks in the park? Oh, wait, we got one last. What was his name again? Sorry. Stinky Noodle. Mr. Stinky Noodle? Stinky Noodle, yes. Stinky Noodle, the skunk. He gets extra points for being so cute. All right. Can we chat for a second? No. Perfect. Oh, he's being a butt. <laughs> he's mad that I had that stupid costume on him, so he's going to crap in my shoe when I go home, OK? <laughs> he's going to so remember he's, that? Yes. That's, that's the response? They all are. He can he, actually remember? He's a seizure alert animal, so yeah, he's super smart. Wow. What do you? So he's actually, I think you mentioned earlier. He's actually a, a ADA certified service animal. He's the first ever and only service skunk. And what's the, if you don't mind me asking, is it because you need him for I'm service? I'm autistic and I have seizures at night. I have nocturnal seizures. So he can pull me out of a nocturnal seizure in dead sleep. And he got him for me two weeks before surgery. I had my, I'm transgender. I had my top surgery and he was to be my, my, recovery animal, I guess, and we bonded from the first night that I had him. He was six weeks old the first time he pulled me out of a seizure, and he's been doing it ever since. I went from having seven to ten seizures in a night to having maybe one or between one and three a week. Since getting him? Since getting him. He's 22 weeks old. And is this your first time at the actual Skunk Fest? Yes. Yes, it is. And this is our second anniversary. Second being year married, yeah. being married anniversary. So it's super awesome. We're going to come back next year. I'm hoping to tattoo for everybody next year. I'm going to be doing some $50, uh, $50 skunk, skunk tats. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> well, congratulations on your anniversary you. and Our finding <laughs> this beautiful baby. Beautiful, incredible baby. As the day came to an end, I made my way back to the judges' tent for the royal award ceremony and grand finale of Skunk Fest where dreams are made and souls are shattered. I stood on the sidelines, nervously waiting to see if Deb will take the tiara once again. 2017 Skunk Fest Princess is going to be, say it, Juniper! <laughs> oh, we gotta go down this way. Doug's this way. 2017 Prince of the Skunk Fest is Kuba. Yay! <laughs> and we We're have to give pictures out of her. Are we ready for the king? Smudge! <laughs> Your hat or <laughs> <laughs> pictures afterwards. Great. Okay. 
2017 <laughs> queen is going to be Gadget by Tab. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> so the 2017 Skunk Fest has come to an end. I came in here not really knowing a thing about skunks. Honestly, didn't even know you could keep one as a pet. But um, you can have a skunk as a pet. You can walk a skunk on a leash. You can bring a skunk around in a stroller. You could even hold two skunks at the same time in your arms. All in all, the people are uh, definitely a bit strange as expected, but in the end, they're really just outsiders, kind of similar to skunks in a way.